creating bleeds, slugs, and printer marks in InDesign. So first, let's talk about trim size. So trim size is the size that my printed document will be cut or trimmed when it clears the printing press. So in this example, you can see with my rulers, this is an eight and a half by 11 document. Most likely, if I were to send this to be printed, they would print it on a larger sheet. And we call it sheet because a sheet is basically paper that's larger than the document trim size, probably somewhere around the, the dimensions of 12 by 14 inches. And those extra space uh, on the sides are used to accommodate bleeds, crops, and other printer marks. So let's first talk about bleeds. Bleeds are an area that extend to the trim size. So in this document, notice that I have a box that has a fill color and it goes right to the edge to my trim size. So if I'm going to print this, this has to go, this box here needs to go beyond the trim size when it's prepared for printing. And this just accommodates any kind of margin of error that might occur during the trimming process. So most of the time we make our designs, we get it all nice, everything's perfect, and then at the end, prior to sending it to the printer, we then address the issues that may occur with bleeds. So typically there are things or issues that um, we, we discuss or we look at um, after the date we've designed our layout. So margin of error, for trim is around 1 32nd to 1 16th of an inch. So our standard bleed side is actually, um, we go 1 8th of an inch uh, or 0.125. So let's define a bleed. There are two ways that we can do it. One would have been when I started this document, made file a new, new document. Um, there's an area that you can expand here, uh, bleed and slug. So let me just turn on this preview so you can see the preview of the new document that I'm making. If I enter in an amount here in the bleed, you'll see it occur on my document. Now I wanna make sure that my link is uh, active. Typically, if you're gonna do a bleed, you're gonna do it on all sides. So I set an eighth of an inch or 0.125 and I'll press tab to let that apply. So a bleed in InDesign is indicated with this red line here and that would be an eighth of an inch beyond the trim size. So that's one way that I can create a bleed. If I have already designed my document and realize that I need to now allow for a bleed because of the way the design was done, I need to go under File and Document Setup, and here I'll preview it again. Same exact thing that I saw in my new document layout. So here I can choose to add my bleed after the fact, and there it is click OK. So then what I'll need to do is extend this out to that bleed. Um, and I can just, I can do it in many methods. I'm doing sort of the lazy method of just dragging it out. Uh, you can extend it uh, with uh, increase in size. You can do whatever method you want. But there's my bleed. Now a slug, that's probably a term that you've not heard very often, uh, especially used in design, but a slug is basically an area where we put notes on our document uh, and the output of the document. So they're notes to the printer, really, things like phone numbers or other information that's related to the file. It's not meant to be part of the final trimmed document, and so it's positioned outside of this trim, outside of the trim size, outside of the bleed size. So when this document is then trimmed, that area is just discarded and tossed. So to define a slug area, you probably saw that when we did file and new and document, uh, you saw that there was a bleed here and here is the slug. So if I do a point one, two, five here, for my bleed, then I would go on and do an extra amount for my slug. And you know, that's really up to you. Most of the time we're gonna go about a half of an inch. Um, I said that the sheet or the paper that is, uh, this would be printed on, oops, I didn't have this linked, would be much larger. So we do have some room out there. We want it to be large enough that we can create basically a text box and put some text out there. So there's my slug, my bleed with the bread, out to the blue for my slug. Now let's go back to my example here where I have my bleed. If I've already created the document and need to add this after the fact, I'm gonna go to the file menu and setup and 
let's put in a slug amount here of 0.5. All right, so those are the two ways that I can do that. Now, um, if I wanted to, I could then put in my information. So let's click OK. And I may need to zoom in. We'll just zoom in. Take my text. And I need to put a, a text box here. So I'm going to create a text box that I need to rotate. Um, so I can just, you know, again, whatever method you want to rotate, I'm going to hold Shift to make sure it snaps. Stick it right in this area. Go to my type tool. And now an important thing here is when I'm typing my text, this is my notes to the printer. Things like you know, call and then my number. Oops. With questions. Okay. So if I, what I need to do is make sure that I use a specific color here on this. Now, if I go to swatches, I don't want to use black. I want to use registration because registration will print on all my plates. In fact, it gives me the tool tip that reminds me it does so. So registration color will print on all of those plates. Now, um, if I want I, I can also do some previews here. Now, you might notice, let me zoom back out again, and I'm using my control and my alt and my space bar. I can remember double click with my hand and that allows my document to fit as large as it can in the window I have. So right now, um, we're in normal view. When I go to preview, my bleeds and my slugs do not show. They're not visible in preview mode. So I'll go back to normal mode. See where I'm at in my bottom of my toolbox here. So if I um, hold this button, we have some other options here. So when I'm in preview, I can go to the option right below it and I can choose, choose bleed. Now the bleed mode will show a preview with the bleed area indicated. If I do this one more time, but choose slug, slug mode actually includes both the bleed and the slug. So um, I'm able to see how this will look um, as I send it off. Now when I want to, we'll go back to, uh, we'll go back to normal view here. When I'm ready to print this, file and print. There may be some things here that need to occur as far as my printing marks. So when you output this document, you can choose whether or not the bleed and slug areas will print. Sometimes when you're doing a proof, you want to see them. So we're going to go in this print dialog box. We're going to go to marks and bleed. And I can choose here to show uh, to print all of my printer marks um, or I can choose, you know, just specific ones use document bleed settings. And at the bottom here, I also have include slug area. So you can see a little bit in my preview that I'm getting a lot of things here visible in my print. A couple of items here, the crop mark basically are guides that define the trim size. Of course, the bleed mark define the bleed size. Registration marks help us to align the color separated outputs if we're printing on four different plates or more. The color bars help to maintain consistent color on the press and the page information includes the title of the document. So there are the, the marks that you may or may not want to have when you're exporting your document or printing a proof. So there are all of the printer marks in InDesign. Very common to use bleeds and slugs, so get to know those well.